Hi, we are Frederick and Isak. Actually, we're Isak and Frederick. And we're instructors here at Frontline Academy, and we're going to go through the basics of uh, stance and uh, body movement in Thai boxing. Thank you. So, I'm a right-handed, uh, pretty weird dude, but like stance-wise normal. This guy's uh, pretty normal, but uh, stance-wise pretty weird dude. So we're gonna start this over because this is just bullshit. But anyway, uh, when we're picking our stance, we're either right-handed or left-handed. That means that basically we're gonna have the right hand as our strongest weapon, then we're gonna have our left leg forward and our left hand forward and the right hand cocked and sitting on the rear leg being the right one. A south paw, which basically is a, a switched stance, is, or the other stance, is the left leg on the, your rear side and the left hand on your rear side, and they're going to be your power weapons. Isaac here is a south paw, so he's leading with his right hand and right leg. Good stuff. Yeah, so basically you have two stances. You have orthodox and southpaw. Uh, some people like to switch in between. Uh, just as you're coming into whatever system, you should be learning one and focusing on one just to get the basics down at least. So orthodox is what most people are, which is just being right-handed and having the left hand and left foot forward. Southpaw is being left-handed and leading with the right hand and the right foot having the left hand and the left leg being the power weapons. Yes. Good stuff, thank you. Regarding this stance, is this is kind of an all-around stance that will allow you to kick and box. So, in essence, this is more of a Dutch Thai boxing stance. We're gonna be ready to kick and punch a lot. And depending on whether we're uh, competing in karate, kickboxing, MMA, boxing, whatever. We have a few different styles, Isaac, if you want to show us. So we have kickboxing, we have Thai boxing, but I want to be here. I want to utilize both my legs, set up punches and then low kicks, whatever. Boom, boom, boom. And if you're, if you have a background in karate, for example, you want to come in and out fast. Yeah, for example, oh man, um, so whether your style is bouncy, jumpy, punch heavy, what the rule system you see are going to compete or train in, under, whichever they are, they're going to determine how you fight or how you train. But this, what we're teaching you here, is like a basic all-around style that will help you both punch, get your hips in, get your legs in, and you'll be able to kick from it, you'll be able to push kick, knee, protect yourself and move. So it's a very basic all around Thai boxing focused style. All right. Okay, we'll start off with our feet together just as a common base. Isaac will future as a southpaw, that means a left hand. I'll future as an orthodox. and. We'll start bringing our rear leg out 90 degrees, down 90 degrees, out 90 degrees, and down 90 degrees. Crack a little in the knees, bring the butt out, get your toes pointing so they form a triangle, get out on the side, sit in your rear leg. And from here, we'll sink together and kind of loose our posture a little bit, which makes it easier for us to bring our elbows in and then just bring the fists to the face Tuck the chin in, have a ping pong ball under your chin. Look up through your eyebrows. And don't pull on your shoulders or neck. You want to have the elbows just hanging, just being able to react and punch. Now we're in a good, just base position. And from here, we can start to move. We'll push off with the rear leg and move the front leg. And from here, we try to keep the hips moving even. We don't want to take bouncy steps. We want to move in one laser focused, even direction. Now we'll push off with the lead leg, take a step backwards. Same when we go right, we push off with the left leg, take a step with the right. Push off with the right, take a step with the left. Good stuff, good stuff. Now we'll turn around and do it again. Whoop. Find the feet first, collect the feet. 
out to the right, down, out, down, cracking the legs, butt out, poor posture, hang down, a little bit sideways. Okay, and we'll move again. Push off with the rear leg, push off with the lead leg, push off with the side leg, push off with the other side, and then we're back again. One of the key points we kind of want to remember doing this, just like in the movie Street Fighter 2. It's a joke. But uh, again, one of the key points we want to consider is that we have connection with the mat at all times. Anytime we kind of come up from the mat, we lose our kinetic, our ability to transfer kinetic energy. Because what we're doing all the time is Earth is pulling us down and we're using gravity to transfer weight into someone else. So as soon as we lift our feet off the ground, then we kind of lose that ability. So feel a good connection in the ground. A very easy common mistake is to, uh, when we get stressed and we're in the middle of sparring, whatever, and we come to the front foot and we just stay there. At any time you're confused, just take a little time out, especially when you're new. Find your stance again. Just be disciplined and always have your weight correct. And this is a mistake everyone does. I do it. I, I, Isaac doesn't do it because he's too good, but uh, most people do. Like those people who are godlike don't do it, but the rest of us do. Um, so find your stance, find your weight, and then start again. Restart the whole thing. Might not be the best time when people are trying to hit you upside the head, but at any time people aren't. So there you go. You good? You happy? Yeah, cool. Good stuff. Okay, next part. Now that we've found our stance, we have the weight in the back foot. We have the weight in the front foot as well. We have like an evenly distri distributed weight. We want to try to start to rotate. So we're going to push off in the rear leg and push off from the balls of our feet, turn the toes, knees and hips over to the lead leg and feel the hip kind of get loaded up and have the weight in the lead foot. Now we're going to use the weight in the lead foot to push off in the balls of our feet, push the knees, the knee, and the hip over to the rear leg again. And notice the direction of the feet, direction of the knee, and the direction of the rear leg and the rear foot as well. So we're loading up the hip, now we're just turning back. Isaac, if you keep going, good stuff, thank you. We see that what we're doing here is we're trying to find out where do I have weight? Where do I have contact with the mat? So we're trying to use the legs to explode our body from side to side. And everything above the hip, we want to just relax. We want to have the elbows in front of us so the punches can travel one narrow, straight path. And we won't give any signs to our opponent. Bum. Good stuff. Yeah, now we want to start with the lead foot and rotate over to the back leg. And when we come to the back leg, we want to have the rear foot try to point a little bit forward so we load up the hip. Because if we have the rear foot just pointing away from us, we lose the ability to bounce straight back into another either combination or just into zero again and be ready to react. So we want to have it pointing forward when we rotate into the rear leg. So. Lead foot, rear foot, lead foot, rear foot, lead foot, rear foot. And there you go. There's a couple of rules to this. We want to try to imagine that we have a point, a pole or a stick going from the top of our head through our body out between our legs that we rotate around. This is to not allow the back to bend forwards when punch, which is very common. We come like this to try to reach, but we see that if we turn around, we have an even greater reach. So we want to rotate around and then that's number one, the pole. Number two is we're in the concrete hall, concrete uh, tunnel. I don't know, as wide as your shoulders. That makes us uh, have to have the elbows in. So we can't bring the elbows out when we're punching. We want to have them in, not to give any signs. So we're punching, keeping the elbows down, and coming back with it as well. And then there's the third rule, which is equally as important as the second and first, I think, is we're going to bring our punches back to the face as fast as they come out. As soon as you think this thought, 
you're gonna punch twice as fast out as well. As soon as I think they're gonna come back fast, we're gonna go from punching here to this. The whole movement is gonna speed up. So those are three rules we can try to apply and uh, you'll probably do better. And one time I will beat you in sparring, Sensei. Thank you. Basic principles of uh, punching. When we turn around, we sit in the rear leg, punch with the lead hand, for example. We're punching a l straight ahead or a little bit upwards, which is gonna bring our shoulder up. So as we can see, if he stays in place and I come from the side, you see my shoulder comes up and covers my chin. The other hand is pulled in towards the face and we're turning the hand over ever so slightly. Okay, and then we pull it back in. Good stuff. Then, just as he did, we can do the jab. Same here. We want to punch, pull the hand over, rotate inwards, rotate the thumbs down like this, and come all the way over and get our chin behind our shoulder. Chin behind the shoulder. All right? Again, I can come from the side. We rotate. Boom. Important detail, we want to have our hands come back to the face whenever we punch with the other hand. And one way to achieve this every time is to relax the neck and shoulders. If we come here, it's going to be real hard for some reason. We want to come here, relax, makes it easier. Okay. Now we'll bring up the topic of center line. So as we can see, if Isaac is now an orthodox, right hand leading, uh, left foot forward fighter, we're gonna try to have his center line in front of mine. And my objective is to come outside of his center line. And his objective is to keep his center line on me or come outside my center line. So as a demonstration, if I'm here, we're both kind of good, we're in the war zone, and I want to try to work my way. If I, for example, I hit him, he's getting a little stung, whatever, so he stays in place, or I jab, or he jabs, and I come out to the side, this angle is very good for me and very bad for Isaac. So I want to have my center line on my opponent all the time, and it's in his best interest not to lose his center line toward me. And if he goes into a southpaw position, it's gonna be the same thing for the both of us. So I wanna come out to this side and he wants to come out to my outer side. Again, if I'm facing you guys, he wants to come out to my outer side. Now he can attack me and I have a limited range of attacks his way. So I wanna go the same way, come here, punch him. Again, I wanna come out here, boom. So the center line is very important. It's important for us to have our center line against him. And it's important for us to try to come with our center line outside of his center line, just as he's doing to me now. Help. All right, thank you. So what we want to do when we start punching is we want to sit down in our legs, have good contact with the mat. We have the rules of having a pole through our body that we rotate around. We have a concrete wall on either side, a tunnel, so we can't bring our elbows up. We gotta have our elbows in front of us. This is also a perception thing. It's hard for your opponent to see your punch coming if they are coming in straight lines. If your elbow comes up, he'll know what's up. It's a good rhyme. And then there's other stuff too, like stay contacted into the mat. Don't overdo and roll over your feet. Don't lean forward. We want to turn around and use as much reach as we can. From the side, we want to stand with a good uh, like point of contact in the mat all, at all times and turn from the foot, turn the heel in and rotate around and back again. Yes, very good. This applies to all punches. 
Hey, do you know the, the other one from Street Fighter, the Shoryuken thingy? Could you show me? Yeah, that one. Cool, man. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> okay, these are the key points and common mistakes. Start off with the stance again. Out, down, out, down. Crack the knees, out with the butt. Feel the legs. Poor posture. Come a little bit sideways. Bring the elbows in. Relax the shoulders. So the key points here were have your elbows in front of you, tuck your chin, have good contact with the mat, be able to turn around and always feel your feet. That's what you're looking for while doing this. You want to feel the weight in each foot each time. Having the elbows pointing down, bringing the hand back as fast as it came out, the rules we went through, the pull from the top of the head down through your body, you're rotating around the concrete walls on either side. And a couple of common mistakes here will be to lift off your air leg and kind of work off the lead leg a little bit. That's totally normal and we want to try to remain in stance and have a good weighted position. We also have a tendency to start pulling our shoulders up and we want to avoid pulling our shoulders and have our elbows in front of us and have a good base and good contact. And that's about it. Thank you. Okay. When we're going through these exercises, we want to visualize an opponent or a bag or something we're focusing on at each time. So everything comes out in the middle and we're always visualizing that our center line is following this person or entity. And this is hugely important when you're shadow boxing as well. So shadow box, you can do it at home, you can do it in the bathroom. Please don't do it while driving, drive responsibly. But visualize this opponent and keep your center line on it. And that should be a little, yeah, that should be a little bit to start off with. What do you think? Yeah? Good stuff. Good stuff. Thank you. Okay.